maybe you've asked yourself these types of questions when you're planning your teaching in terms of what tool will be best for dot 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 doing something in the classroom, or maybe which tool is better for the intended purpose of my use and facilitating students' learning. Or maybe, you know, looking at a specific tool that you might like to incorporate into your teaching in terms of, is this tool going to work for me and my course? And yet, uh, this is a diagram for 2018 when there was at least 200. These are the 200 top tools that were available to instructors in 2018. Um, and, and the number of e-learning platforms available online um, or through digital devices is growing exponentially. So it's just massive. It's actually <laughs> inconceivable to even imagine being able to navigate each of these tools and know which one is best for your teaching and for your students and for the um, for the course, for the institution that you're working uh, within. Uh, and there has been sort of this practice wisdom developing where, you know, those who are in educational technology, uh, those who are in instructional design, have a really good uh, working knowledge of which tools meet which learning and teaching needs. But when it comes to individual instructors making that choice, it's a lot to navigate and it's, it's hard to do. There are some models. So this is the 2015 sections model by Bates. Um, and it was one of the earlier forms of suggesting that a lot of different elements, these, you know, as Bates put it, eight different elements feed into an instructor's selection of media for their teaching. Everything from considering their students to the type of interaction they were trying to uh, foster to the cost and time of that technology, as well as the other things you see, see, see here on the screen. A colleague of mine, Dr. Gavin Watson, who's at Memorial University now, and myself developed a, a rubric for e-learning tool evaluation that drew on some of this previous literature, but was also specifically designed for instructors and educational uh, support staff to formatively evaluate an e-learning tool. So before the tool gets implemented into the classroom practice, into a course, uh, looking at that tool very critically from the multidimensional aspects of, you know, considering function, technology, and then the teaching and learning elements of a tool. So it draws a lot on something like Bates model that had the multifaceted levels of evaluation, but puts it into rubric form so that there's um, the evaluate, evaluative scoring or judgment on the tool itself and its suitability on these various characteristics. So I'd like to orient you a little bit to the rubric and point you toward the rubric that you could actually use for evaluating any tool um, or technology that you yourself are considering. So the ru rubric has eight uh, categories. Within each category are sub criteria. Uh, the categories specifically are functionality, accessibility, and technical, mobile design, and then privacy, data protection, and, pr and rights all together as one. And then um, the presences, social, teaching, and cognitive are each broken down as their own categories there to, to comprise the eight. So within these eight categories, um, the criteria are measured at three levels of achievement in terms of the tool working well, being you know, the most ideal situation in terms of its um, ability to support you and your learners. Uh, some situations where there might be minor concerns within that particular sub criteria or where serious concerns are definitely worth flagging and um, and looking into a bit further. So I'll, I'll elaborate on an example of the functionality category that has, on, as you see on the screen, um, the three criteria of scale, ease of use and tech support or, or the, the availability of help with scale. A tool is ideal for teaching and learning generally when it can be accommodated to any class size because it has the flexibility to um, not only have any number of users join and participate on the tool, but possibly to create smaller subgroups or communities within that larger um, class size. 
Ease of use um, is, you know, it works well when the tool has that user-friendly feeling. The interface is easy for you as the instructor and students to become skillful with the tool. And, and not only that, but it, ideally, um, maybe personalizing that or um, heightening the intuitive manner because of the ease of, of use. Finally, with tech support, obviously you want support when you need it, not only you, but for your students. And this will divert some of the need, you know, you don't want to be the, the tech support for that tool. You want to be able to point to other resources and other um, sources of support uh, when things go wrong. So campus-based technical support is, in this rubric, prioritized over everything else because there's someone uh, within local to your institution that can help. That or that the help documentation for the tool is robust and readily available and easily makes troubleshooting um, smooth and, and, um, and easy to navigate. So that quick orientation to the rubric, I hope gives you a sense as to how you could be using this rubric to evaluate a tool. You could um, be focusing specifically on um, the e-learning tool that you're, you're considering adopting into your teaching and to work through the rubric to um, question how it sort of, um, how you would evaluate it given what's represented on the rubric. This is uh, the rubric itself is Creative Commons licensed so that others should feel free to adopt and adapt it as they see fit and desired. Um, so you can download the PDF if you're looking to adapt and, and make changes for yourself and for your institution, you could be accessing it on GitHub. Uh, otherwise, our contact information, uh, both Gavin and myself, uh, is available there on the screen. And we really do hope that when this tool is being um, put to use or when you're adapting it for your own, um, for your own use, that uh, we'd love to hear from you.